Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Monday, September the 14th. I'm Eric Wilkinson and yes, you very well may recognize me as the Wolfman from mainstream media where I've talked about the economic data, the geopolitical environment, how that comes in to impact the overall markets with my market analysis. And I go a bit further in these daily market commentaries and talk a little bit about these option strategies that I'm implementing into my portfolio to increase the overall yield. One of the best ways to do that is high probability trades around options trading. And we talk about those devil of the details in those webinars. So I drilled down on some of those nuances in these daily market commentaries. Yeah, I'm talking about my strategies, how I'm lowering overall cost basis and different uh, underlyings that I own. But I go into a little bit more detail as to the right strike location, when, where, and why we're putting those trades on uh, in those webinars. So please check those out. I do talk, you know, brush across it a little bit uh, in the daily market commentaries here. Well, just a moment ago, everybody was happy. Now we got uh, crude oil slightly moving into negative territory by three cents. But again, kind of you know, at that sweet spot we've been talking about in the 30s is a good place, I think, right now for crude oil and the overall economy with the way where we have supply and demand working on the manufacturing sector. It's still not ramped up to the place where we, uh, we would like it to be or what we had seen before the pandemic. But again, you know, we are trading crude oil at levels that are probably sustainable for the retail investor to be able to spend more money elsewhere and that is a good thing as far as i'm concerned with crude oil and we've got gold moving higher by about 19 dollars and 50 cents you know we've talked about it that support level of 1923 is probably the place where we should be buying uh, gold futures or you know uh, playing around with gold to the upside there i think we're going to kind of stick in and around this area between 1923 and uh 2000 2000 has been acting as a resistance but very strong support uh, when people are trying to defend that 1900 and uh, bouncing off of that 1923 area there. Bonds up another six points on the day, trying to get back up into this little uh, sliver of value area that I've been talking so much about above, uh, we call it 177. It's really like one, uh, 176.20-ish is the line in the sand there and you can see we're just hovering above that uh, Fibonacci there and the point of control just being slightly higher at 178 so the market should probably migrate back towards that point of control and it's tried to get up there a couple of times bumping up against that Fibonacci there and it's acted as resistance as the market bumps up against it and uh, people are starting to come in to cover some trades there I think that though we're not seeing interest rates move anywhere anytime soon. So that point of control that we've seen here at 178-ish area is the sweet spot and we'll probably see the market move back up into there. All right, VIX moving down today slightly. Why? Because like I mentioned earlier, we are, everybody is happy. The tech sector really moving today. We've got NVIDIA uh, and AMC, or sorry, not AMC, um, um, the other <laughs> chip maker. They they working on a deal there and that's pushing those stocks higher also across the board tech sector doing very well we are also seeing the healthcare sector if you will with uh, astrazeneca being able to start up their trials again on the vaccine it was uh they paused it remember i talked about this last week they paused that trial uh well it comes down to a person one one of the people in the trial got sick from uh uh, a strange illness or something like that. So they wanted to pause that. Now they've gotten the green light to start that trial back up again. So AstraZeneca and a couple of the other healthcare like Pfizer starting to move today as well. So across the board, we're seeing some pretty good strength coming into the markets. Here we have the NASDAQ up 260 points being led by some of those tech sector names. Uh, and then we move over to the E-mini S&Ps up about 64 points on the day again just a strong day the markets really not seeing a whole lot of red candles throughout the day session as you can see here heading into the day just a uh, rally not off economic data because we didn't really have anything across the pond we had industrial production coming in at 4.1 percent expected to be four percent and they did revise the previous month's number up slightly uh, by four tenths of a percent and that isn't really going to be the catalyst to drive this market today. It's just more of um, the healthy 
uh, economies, or the, not necessarily a healthy economy, but I think that a lot of people are um, very happy with how things are coming out of this pandemic. Uh, restaurants are starting to fill back up, at least here in my area. People out on the roads, we can see people are getting out and not really hunkering down so much anymore. So that uh, is probably something that is lifting people's spirits as they are uh, getting out and about and not having that cabin fever and uh, things of that nature. So it's starting to make the markets really start to move here. Um, also, some big things happening in the gaming sector. If you guys were watching TV, it was all about football this weekend. We had college football all day Saturday and uh, NFL on Sunday. They are, we haven't really seen the numbers on uh, viewership, but what people are starting to announce is you know, DraftKings is saying that a lot of people are coming back. FanDuel was saying a lot of people are starting to place bets on these different uh, sporting events. And also with uh, DraftKings, you know, everybody's trying to compete right now with the 60 million people that uh, Barstool Sports has and that pin gaming. Now, remember, we bought pin or I bought pin down at around four dollars and fifty cents. Now it's rallied up quite nicely. And that is based on the fact that they had a a deal with Barstool Sports. Barstool Sports is getting ready to release their online gaming ad, uh, platform, uh, which will allow you to gamble on certain games. Right now, only in Pennsylvania, but that is expected to s spread. Now there's this big hubbub about DraftKings Caesars, which gives them uh, exposure with w William Hill, which has been in the gaming sector in London for quite some time and it's all about this online gambling going on. So uh, DraftKings up almost 10% on the day. You can see just slightly shy of that and Caesars, sorry, uh, pins there. Caesars is uh, CZR, which I don't really trade because the markets and the options are not very good here. Actually, Caesars not too long ago, just moments ago, was up about 8% uh, as well based on this, um, this uh, these talks between DraftKings and Caesars. DraftKings does have exposure on on the floor of Caesars with a uh, gaming room area for betting on sports and stuff like that. Uh, but they're uh, consummating more of a stronger relationships there um, as of right now is what we're starting to hear uh, today. So Caesars making big moves, Penn starting to make some moves as well, and DraftKings definitely making uh, moves today based on that. Uh, well, you know, despite all of that that's going on, those moves happening, I've decided to get into Kellogg uh, with this whole pandemic. I think it's really going to do well moving forward because I think a lot of people have gotten back to their roots where they're eating breakfast at home. And Kellogg obviously is a big cereal manufacturer and th they have done very well throughout this pandem pandemic. And I think that there is a bit of a shift in what the consumers are going to be doing going forward and that is eating breakfast at home yes they probably will start going back out for lunches uh, and dinners and stuff like that but i think one of those meals that's going to kind of be uh, more of a staple for people is eating at home and whether or not it's procter and gamble uh, general mills or kellogg in this case i think that those types of stocks are going to do well moving forward, at least throughout the rest of uh, 2020. So I decided to go in here and add some uh, longs in this trade. And I went in and bought some calls in the December, bought the 67 and a half calls in there for $2.40. Um, kind of right around where we are right now. I didn't catch it on the big rally there. It was actually on starting to pull back when I uh, was hit on these calls for the $2.40 uh, and I'm going to hold on to those for uh, as long as we can stay above. This Fibonacci for one is what I'm going to be keeping an eye on. We did come down there and test that earlier today, uh, but I definitely want to be out if we break below this uh, candle here. And so basically if we break below $65 and start trading with the 64 handle, that's where I'm gonna be looking to pull this back because it, it, or pull this trade off because I think that it will have a tendency to wanna to push back down to that point of control. So any, any type of break below $65 is where I'm going to be out of this trade. But 
playing it to the upside because I think that we could easily go back up and test that 70 handle. So a good risk reward on this type of trade where I've, I've, I've got good strike location, I believe. Very low implied volatility. Heading into the next earnings, which is in that cycle that I would be having, I'm all the way out in December, so I will see volatility expand during the life of this contract, which is what we're trying to set ourselves up for. So directionally, if I'm starting to move sideways and I get that volatility expansion, I'll still be a profitable trade. Uh, so working myself into a, a position that uh, I have a lot of things that are working in my favor there. Uh, that's about it. I haven't added a whole lot of things, just kind of sitting tight, uh, did do these uh, Kellogg trades, rather small for um, you know portfolio value, but I wanted to play something to the upside in this space, which I don't really have any exposure to at this point, or at, before this point anyway. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Take a moment to go over our disclaimer as we are an educational company, and know your risks before getting involved because uh, we are just trying to teach you guys how to trade options that's what your takeaway here should be, is these option strategies, based on your assumptions that you come up with, what we do then is show you a road path, a roadmap in order to implement that option strategies to increase your probability of success. Kind of like with this catalog, I have a bullish assumption in it. Why wouldn't I sell perts versus buying calls? Well, mostly to do with the uh, volatility and my expectations of how that volatility is going to react going forward and that's why I picked those Decembers to limit the theta decay expansion of volatility because volatility affects those further duration options we talk about that all the time in these webinars and all of those things kind of moving together will help me out in this trade all right so that's all I got other than if you can't take that take it easy